fellow soulmates and food lovers and welcome to another episode of Eileen's Kitchen Stories. Some days ago I came across a post on BuzzFeed talking about how certain fruits and vegetables grow and I came to realize that most of the time I am guilty of not even caring where they come from as long as I can shop and consume them so I thought this might also be interesting for you so here they come with some additional info. Brussels sprout yeah, not all of you might be a fan of these, I know. I certainly am a Brussels sprout lover. These little green balls are native to the Mediterranean region with other cabbage species, but they first appeared in Northern Europe during the 5th century, later being cultivated in the 13th century near Brussels, hence the name. Look at how they grow. What? The edible sprouts grow like buds in a helical patterns along the side of a long thick stalk that can grow up to 60 to 120 centimeters in height and each stalk can produce 1.1 to 1.4 kilograms per stalk. Peanuts Apart from the cute little series that we all know and love, we can buy and devour peanuts in different variations, you know, salted, roasted, natural or no Mr. Tums. Oh yes! As the second name groundnuts gives away easily, they grow below the earth. I mean, look at this beautiful peanut flower. And the gorgeous peanuts are its seeds. For harvesting, the entire plant, including most of the roots, is removed from the soil. And then after a sufficient drying process, the pots are being removed from the rest of the bush and we can eat them. Yum! China, by the way, is the largest producer and consumer of these beauties. And another nut, the cashew. The species is originally native to northeastern Brazil, and when the country was under the power of Portugal, the colonists began exporting cashew nuts in 1550s. Today, the major production of cashew nuts occurs in Vietnam, Nigeria, India, and the Ivory Coast. But how do they actually grow? Like this. The cashew tree is large and it can grow up to 40 meters tall. This edible pumpkin look-alike develops from the pedicle and receptacle of the cashew flower and is called cashew apple. Obviously, they're completely ignoring the fact that it comes in a pear shape, guys. Well, never mind. What we are after is the little thing that comes out at the end of it. The cashew nut. Pineapples. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the pineapple plantation. Yep, it kind of looks like pineapple is growing on a stick. As city kids may just know them from the natural supermarket habitat, the vegetable department, or the crazy Asian man singing about pans and apples and pineapples, well, anyways. When creating its fruit, it usually produces up to 200 flowers, and once it does flower, the individual fruits of the flowers join together to create what we refer as pineapple. Even though pineapple is a native fruit of South America, Hawaii was the first place to commercially cultivate the fruit, and today it is globally produced at 24.8 million tons annually, with Costa Rica holding around 11% of the worldwide production. Cinnamon! To all of you cinnamon lovers out there, I know most of you know exactly where the spice comes from, but maybe the one or the other doesn't know that you can get cinnamon not only as a ground powder, nope, they come in sticks, or you can buy the dried flowers as well. Cinnamon is the name for several tree species, because yes, it's their bark. We are in fact eating dried tree barks. Only a few of the tree species are grown commercially for spice. Global sales from cinnamon exports by country amounted to 484 million US dollars in 2016 only, with Sri Lanka and Indonesia providing 50% of the world supply. So if you love cinnamon, you might want to plan your next trip that direction. Kiwis. No, not the birds, the fruit. When you thought that these fruit babies grow on trees, um, well, I have to say sorry, because they grow like grapes on vines. Kiwi, or also Chinese gooseberry, is the edible berries of several species of woody wines. The most common cultivar group of kiwi fruit is called heiwa, and the kiwi fruit is native to north central and eastern China and dates back to the 12th century during the Song Dynasty, and they are still the biggest producer in the world since today. Oh, and have you tried the kiwi berries? I mean, give them a shot. Delicious and no fuzzy furry skin. Sesame. I assume the majority knows that sesame is a seed from a plant, but have you actually seen the plant that it is taken from? I haven't, so here it goes. Sesame is widely naturalized, especially in tropical regions, and is cultivated for its edible seeds, which grow in pots or buns. These pots only burst and release the seeds when they are truly ripe. The world harvested 6.2 million metric tons of sesame seeds in 2014, with Tanzania, India and Sudan as the largest producers. Dragon fruit. 
So this is a fruit that I came across in Germany some years ago. Apart from its beautiful flesh and the very sweet taste, the design of its fruit really caught my attention and then I came across how they grow. Yeah, that's a cactus. They are the fruit of several cactus species indigenous to the Americas. Nowadays you can also find it in Southeast Asian nations where it remains an important part of the dietary fruit intake. Sometimes it's called moonflower or queen of the night because the plant blooms from evening to midnight, only to wither the next day in sunlight, so they completely rely on nocturnal pollinators such as bats and moths for fertilization. Interesting, huh? Bananas! Since having lived on the Canary Islands, I am obsessed with this fruit. But there are two things which are extremely special about this plant. They grow on shrubs, you know, pseudo stems, that consist of old banana leaves which can grow between 1 to 3 meters before the actual banana plant begins. And bananas grow upwards, not the way we buy them in stores with the fruits down. Nope, nope. The second interesting thing is the fruits don't have any seeds to grow new banana trees. A banana plant dies after having lived shortly and bearing the fruit once. But before it dies, it builds up saplings that grow to become new big banana plants, meaning that it reproduces by division instead of fertilization with seeds. So peeps, I hope you enjoyed this short episode with the facts. Let me know how you find these shorter in-between videos as it takes me a bit longer to shoot and edit my regular videos, but I don't want you to wait too long for new videos, hence the small skits. So yeah, have a say in the comment section below and feel free to share and like this video and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead. See you next time then, bye!